anime's most disrespectful finality, The Eminence in Shadow by the GOAT Nuxtaku himself. Let's see what he has to say, huh? Let's let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, I okay. have completed Eminence in Shadow. How that was is it? Correct. I have done the thing that I promised you that I'd do, which immediately makes me the perfect YouTuber. Subscribe. Very humble. Very humble. Leave a like. I know, I know. I deserve all the applause. Thank you guys. Guys, don't clap so loud. You're not gonna be able to hear me in the I'll share his link later, right? I'll share his link. I'll, I'll like it on advance. I'll like it on advance. Right? Okay, okay, okay. I recently dropped an hour-long analysis video analyzing Sid Kagano, the main character. As if you guys, if you guys actually want me to react to an hour-long video, and again, the way that I do reactions, I talk way too fucking much. This hour-long video that we're going to watch, if we actually watch it, will be a fucking two-hour video. If you actually want it, let me know in the comments section, because I'm not sure if I want to commit to a fucking two-hour-long reaction, but... I'm happy now. Power done right character. Talking about in incredible detail and depth how this dude is not just your typical self insert bumbo. This makes me feel like Nuxtaku actually did his research and gave it. Because, like, right now, I'm on the hunt for Eminence and Shadow content where they tell me in detail things that you would never know as an anime watcher, things you would only know by reading the light novel. Like little deep, not, not spoilers of the light novel, but like stuff that we've already watched and covered, but missed out details like that. If Nux's video for the one hour video is like that, I'll watch it, man. Oh, Bingus protagonist that's just, oh, whoopee, he's strong, and that's that's it for the sake that, of strong. But I wanted to of. talk about how Eminence in Shadow has a lot of really darker themes. I am Japanese Isekai protagonist. Slavery is wrong. Now Fumi and, uh, you know. Rudy from no now for me freeze the slaves. Rudy participated in the child slavery auction, but you know he's saving them. Anyways, and a lot of really good character writing. Yes. I really wanted to talk a little bit about the ending of the series, aside from doing an actual overarching story review, mm. like of the. The finale was fucking nuts. The finale was fucking nuts. I guess this video is just gonna be straight up just like the finale, entire huh? Entire show, all in a shot. I wanted to spend a little time talking about the ending with you. Let's go. To be frank. The finale, like the final climax of the last arc, was so good from a character yes. writing perspective. It's crazy. Sid Kagano continuing to blow your minds in every possible way that he could. The war goddess Beatrix being introduced as an incredibly powerful character and also yes. someone with motivations that we can... And Iris too. Remember the Iris tag up after Iris got the fucking artifact to power out, right? But Beatrix just basically wanted to free fight. Beatrix saw Shadow about to like attack. Oh, Lord Perv Asad was getting attacked by Oriana, right? But then we were like preventing her from killing or something. And then Beatrix stepped in just to fight on behalf of Lord Perv Asad. Not really to save Lord Perv Asad. She just wanted to have a fucking good fight with Shadow because she's like, oh, something worthy finally showed up, right? Completely understand and a very curious future ahead how she will react when she finds out that Alpha is actually part of Shadow Garden. Mm. Incredible. Will that actually happen? I think it's inevitable, right? Like, it's got to happen at some time, right? Character development for Princess Iris, who took her first ever colossal L. And People really hate Iris. What I've noticed from reading the YouTube comment sections, well, YouTube comment sections was actually pretty tame, but on TikTok, People fucking hate Iris so much. I think it's because she was so hostile against Sid or Shadow at the end, or at least mundane man. And like, I guess people, I, people don't really like, I don't, hot take, right? But I don't think people like powerful girl characters. I think recently people think that mainstream media has gone so woke that they self-insert these really powerful female characters for representation. And they might see a little bit of that blemished in the Eminence and Shadow in the form of Iris. She is a pretty powerful character, but then compared to everyone else, like Shadow, for example, it's not even fucking close, right? But then if you see a girl like this that really is so angry for the rightful reasons, but against Shadow, who we all root for, then I could really see how people start to hate this character. Especially after we body her, she doesn't really know her place. She picks up like that fire sword artifact and continues to fight. People really fucking hate Iris. I, I didn't really have anything against Iris, but some people fucking hate this character, man. And she knows that she has to protect her country, despite the fact that she feels inadequate about it now. You had... Straight up, Nux, what exactly, right? Iris is literally on herself because her dad's a piece of shit. The kingdom is going to ruins. The only way to save this mid-gar, emphasis on mid, right, kingdom, is for Iris to step up and win this festival again. I think she is a great character, yeah. I think her motivation, everything was actually great if you paid attention to the story, but a lot of people just see this girl just like screaming and she's throwing herself against Sid, a shadow, and just getting bodied. So I guess a lot of people just like hate her for that. Sword princess lady. 
Yes, Midgar. Emphasis on mid. The kingdom or whatever that was, you know, taken over by this dude named Perv Asshat, which is the greatest name of an antagonist. You know, this is not one of the final names in Emerson Shadow where the names are discoded, right? Lord Perv Asshat. The names in Emerson Shadow are so fucking overlooked. And they're kind of just like... No, this is an English translation, obviously. Yeah, it's the English translation. I have ever heard how she was tricked, framed, forced to kill her own father yeah. for the sake She killed her own dad. I forgot this. She had the commitment to kill her own dad. She threw away everything she had about royalty from her family, right? The entire Oriana kingdom is done. Her father is that she had to kill her own dad. She abandoned everything. She gave up the one thing that she had left, the burger wrapper that Sid gave her. She had to sacrifice that to join Shadow Garden. Oriana's backstory? Yo, this is building up to be an extremely hype, but like a really sad one. Sake of her country, framed again, became an outlaw, joined Shadow Garden, and completely had her entire- There it is. There it is, right here. Framed again, became an outlaw, joined Shadow Garden- <sighs> The Burger King rapper, man. Salute, Burger Rapper. Most people probably see her as an arrogant character. Yeah, that's one of the things I kept seeing too. People thought that Iris was extremely arrogant, and to a degree, she doesn't really know her place. Yeah. And completely had her entire past ensnared and taken away from her, where she could just become. Bro, look at her hands shaking here. Oh my God, Drill Sergeant, how could you do this? Ensnared and taken away from her, where she so much emotion from a fucking burger wrapper, a used burger wrapper that we've kept being ripped. So much emotion here. You know, Eminence in Shadow is great when people are fucking screaming about burger wrapper being cut off. Look at her hand motion. She could just become a nameless shaking. foot soldier among the ranks of the epic harem of. Our Lord and Savior, Sid Kagano, the edgiest reincarnation of Jesus the world has ever seen. On a character standpoint, the series is mm. ending on a high for so, so many different characters. And I think this goes to show that Eminence in Shadow is built different from other isekai and from other anime that are just your seasonal fling. When you have. Is Eminence in Shadow that impactful that I don't think it's a seasonal fling? I absolutely agree. How many weekly seasonals have you seen in isekai that we've seen? Well,. For me, it's mainly to make content to see if people are interested, but there hasn't been many isekai that's really stuck around and made me feel that it's special. Eminence and Shadow steps in one of them. Mushoku Tensei is another. I think of, of the seasons that we've covered in this channel, that, I, I don't think there's really any other isekais that I really felt some sort of connection and kept being reminded and was hyped for for the future seasons. Like, reincarnates the slime, overlord, like, all that stuff that we haven't seen yet on this channel. Like, obviously, those are probably the greats, too. But I'm just thinking specifically on this channel for the last year that we've been watching isekais on. Very rare that we've seen, like, a seasonal isekai and we're like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember that show. It's like, no, that's, we just forget about it and we just move on. But, yeah, the I'm Atomic Cemented, the name of Eminence and Shadow, agreed. Iconic moments like that really do kind of, like... Just like stamp something into your hearts that you're reminded of. Have an isekai anime with an overpowered protagonist, it's usually all about him. But when it comes to Eminence in Shadow, this dude definitely takes most of the attention, most of the screen time, and gives you most of your boners. Yeah. But the actual character writing and character arcs of all of the supporting yes. cast, which all- Yes, again, Nux is making a very good point here. And again, I keep comparing Eminence in Shadow with One Punch Man. Isekai One Punch Man, because both stories have an OP main character that can solve everything if they're immediately thrown into the situation, but it's not. Instead, they're shown in at the very end. You know why? Because so that you have all these different side characters, these supporting roles that are so developed and so well written that you're so immersed into the conflict that even like the enemies that you know are going to be jobbers at the end of the day, they're really hype. You almost feel the threatening level of them because that you're you're so entrenched into the supporting side characters and how they're struggling against the enemies. Even though Shadow could show up and just blow everything up, all this builds up so much hype so that you can have Shadow show up at the every at the end. Go I'm atomic, people fucking lose it. Reuse this formula. It's so good. One Punch Man does a similar thing. Side time doesn't show up immediately. It goes through all these different supporting characters that are well written. They're not random side characters that you just forget about. You're actually you love them. These side characters are actually really hype. Also gives you boners for totally different reasons. Is surprisingly phenomenal for what looks like, you know, random fling trash. E is this, I got reincarnated as a, with, I got reincarnated with the f handphone, smartphone. I think this is another isekai like that, right? Something like that. Isekai that you're just going to sit down, watch and have fun. So I wanted to go on this journey with you talking about anime's most disrespectful season finale ever. Was it the most disrespectful season finale ever? 
hard for me to cast that judgment because I haven't seen enough animes to kind of say that. But from what I've seen, from what Shadow did, to the point where she was, he was fucking doing 1v2 the entire time, remember? He had a crowbar out at a certain point, fighting these people with like epic legendary gear. And at the very end, he trolls them. He could have just ended them, but he fucking trolls them and just leaves. I think it is pretty disrespectful. It is really disrespectful. It's definitely up there, right? It's on the tier list of disrespectful finales? Absolutely. Ever. All right, well, we could run into this. This anime blew me away, The Eminence in Shadow. So, for those of you that are not caught up with- No shot. No, he's not going to be reacting to this video right now, right? Imagine this is Nux reacting to someone else's video, and I'm reacting to him reacting to that video. <laughs> The Nuxanor lore. I actually did finish Eminence in Shadow. Okay. I did finish it. I already recorded an hour long analysis of Shadow, an OP analysis. We're mm -hmm. gonna just jump right into this because this guy is apparently talking about how the Eminence in Shadow ending was really cool. So, this anime blew me away. The Eminence in Shadow. Let's see what we got. It's also the a small chat. No shy. I'm about to react to Nux reacting to someone else. <laughs> Episode wraps this premise. Up okay, let's go. As Sid fights Beatrix and yes. Amelia after the tournament in which he pretended to be Mundane Man, a character yep. in which Dude, I freaking love that he his fake name was Mundane Man. Yes. Literally the best name ever. All Better the names than are the goaded. villain. The villain in this arc's name was per Perv Asshat. That's right. Perv Asshat. Sid didn't want to reveal himself as Shadow just yet, and he knew he couldn't do so as Sid. And this is the plus sides for this anime. They don't take themselves too seriously. The main yes. villain's name towards the end of the season is literally <laughs> pervy ass. Literally perv ass hat. How good is that? Who the fuck came up with that in the boardroom? They clearly aren't taking this too seriously. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say the board writers are taking this anime as serious as Sid is taking the world around him. I mean, the whole point is to not take it seriously, right? It's the same thing as cringe becoming cool. You take it less seriously to the point it kind of seems serious at times, but the names like Lord Pervassa, what are some other ridiculous names, right? You have like Mundane Man, Lord Pervassa, you have Skeleton, you have Potato. All these names are like ridiculous puns. Stylish Bandit Slayer. The developers absolutely- Yeah, I love he starts talking with the, the NPC voice. He's like, <clears throat> no, I will start using the badass voice now. Increase their budget. In His? The accent change from the regular voice to the badass voice, although those are one of the coolest moments though. Even John, I hear that John Smith has a totally different voice actor. I'm not sure if that's true, but I hear some people were saying, no, John Smith's voice actor is actually not even like Sid's original voice actor. Sound, quality, and an animation, as most developers do to keep the show going and to leave it out with a bang so that demand for another season can be in the high. Which it Different voice actor? And along okay. with the animation, the sound quality is also heavily increased. Yes. I think the so not only just like the sound effects, but like the soundtrack itself too. I think one of the most important things for me when watching an anime is good soundtrack. Kenichiro Suehiro, I think, is the main composer for the Eminence and Shadow soundtrack. Flash step! Dude, the sound design is so good in Eminence and Shadow. Ooh. He's literally so terrifying, the way he teleports behind these Yeah, people. the frame step there. And then every moment, he just keeps walking right behind. Look at this. Beatrix is holding the fucking sword, but Shadow just casually walking side. She's just walking. He's straight up just walking. Holy shit. Holy I don't know shit. who was taking notes in the boardroom, but it just does something to me when Sid says these words and you get that instant bass effect. And this might yeah. be a new thing in anime that goes on, but I gotta say, character pulling something off and then speaking in high bass, it just goes burr. I don't know why, but it makes That's a new trend. Excited. I actually talked about that in my video. It. I want more of it in season two. I tell me. Oh, I gotcha. Dude, it just sounds so scary. We do see Sid pull off his old weapon of crowbar. Before he was That's right. And look at this fucking weapon. Iris right here picked up like a super legendary artifact or something, and we're fighting it off with the fucking crowbar, bro. Two awesome crowbars. Now I don't know about anybody. Dual else, wielding. I was so hyped to see him pick up these crowbars, especially mm -hmm. since I, I like Nightwing. 
I know crowbars right, well, aren't you know, screaming fair, sticks, but I, enough, you, you, you okay, can see the right, comparison, right? right? You, you, right anyway, right, I think it's right. sick the mithril for sword to fight with two crowbars and to basically make it look easy, and that's exactly what he does. Sick he doesn't even need shadow. it. He could have barehanded fought them. He could have straight up just like slapped them around, like how he did with Zen on Griffey. Oh, I should say, is absolutely not taking this fight seriously. Well, that's the beauty. And he's going up against like the two strongest people around. If yep. I didn't know any better, I would say he's putting in at least ten percent of effort. If Maybe even less. That. But I was surprised. <laughs> if, if this is Anos Voltigo, you know this is going to be like 1% or some shit. I to see him take on Beatrix so easily. Like, I knew the man's was broken. I knew he was going to win. He's the main character of the show. But I didn't think he would take her on this easily. I figured he would at least have to use magic or Bruh, at some point would at least bro, break this dude. Do we even use magic on them? Like, if you consider his, like, reinforced movement styles, like, his physical abilities going up, maybe that's magic? Because, you know, in the anime Room Pie video, you know, it said, like, basically enhances his everything with the shadow suit. But we're, ta we're talking about specific magic, right, being used. There's, like, I don't think there's actually going to... He never used that Metonic here until the very end. Even that was a troll. No, he... The magic... The magic water. Oh, there was that one moment in the water scene that I think we're going to see soon. He did not no, need a sweat for fight. any He's fight. in complete control of the situation and seems to be enjoying himself. Before he escaped. In fact, I, I think that was one of the mo most dirty fights. I'm working on another video right now. Here's a spoiler for the thumbnail. <laughs> it's going to go so hard. Sid we'll watch that too, maybe. Badass, hilarious laughter. Something that makes me feel like he, he practiced this laugh and wanted to rehearse his. He practiced and rehearsed this laugh every fucking day to us to use it. Yes, this fight. This literal fight was an excuse just so he could laugh like this. I swear, you know in the back of his mind, someone like Sid is thinking like this. He's like, the only point of this fight is so that I could laugh like, like this. Like Yagami laughed just for kicks and giggles. And that's exactly what it was a great what moment. Sounds like. <laughs> it is. It's such a wild laugh. <laughs> Two girls just sitting down like, what the fuck is about to happen to me, bro? What's going on? <laughs> The angles and even the face reaction, this is definitely intentional to be a death note. That's like a death note reference? I wouldn't really know because I haven't seen it, but I guess so. <laughs> do, you, do you hear the... the <laughs> yeah, that, that part of the laugh? It makes it further unhinged when you hear the... <laughs> when it, like, it goes beyond. That, that like makes it more, I don't know, more deranged. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. Bro, English dub? Come on, man. Yeah, all right, okay, no, no, no. All right. That was a death. That was a death note uh, insert, right? That was like edited. Never mind. Right. Okay. Immediately after Light Yagami laughing his ass off in front of these two helpless ladies, he gives off one of the most badass base blows I have seen in this show. Give it to me. If you thought Atomic or I Got You was good, this steals it. And the what developers is it? knew what they were doing when they made this. What scene. did he say? And I forget. I what did he say? Lost it. Got it. Yeah, this is Where? This is just so bad at. What's so All right. is that he Who's running? gets into a fight every arc. The arc fin finishes with him fighting some incredibly overpowered guy, and he beats them without even trying, all right? Every yeah. arc, despite there being zero challenge to him, it's still impressive that he wins so, so much. Like, it's cr like the display in power, the absolute difference. Like, this fight is not a fight. This is not a duel. It's already a 1v2, and people are using fucking legendary artifacts, and we're using a crowbar. That's not the point. This is not a fight to Sid or Shadow. This is a demonstration of power. It's like to show how different you and me are. Crazy. It's crazy. Normally when they try to build up a, a protagonist, okay, and he's going up against his enemy, even though he's overpowered, okay? Yes. Straight up just a flex. It's just a flex. Literally, even though he's overpowered, there's still some part of us that's like, but maybe this is the one that's going to push him to his limit. You know mm. what I mean? In one point, there's never been a scene like that. In Eminence and Shadow, there's never been a moment where I was like, oh, an actual threat to Shadow. Because I don't think that's how the story is structured. There might be moments where Shadow is kind of like restrained a bit. For example, the terrorist arc where they casted a magic barrier so we couldn't use magic. Like, yeah, like that kind of makes sense, right? It's like, okay, Shadow kind of nerfs more. But at the end of the day, if this wasn't in place, I don't think he'd ever struggle. There's still never been a single moment where I thought, this is the opponent that will make Shadow go all the fucking way. Even the current arc right now, what are we doing? We're, we're so fucking strong that Shadow has to literally fight his own company. Like, this is, 
like to bring Shadow Garden down, right? Well, technically Mitsugoshi, but Shadow Garden backs Mitsugoshi. Like, the whole point of this arc is that Shadow Garden is so strong that the only person that can take Shadow Garden down is Shadow himself. His waifus, his army of waifus is so strong that it's time for Shadow to roleplay as John Smith, fucking smack him down so that he can rebuild it up. Like, it's just crazy. And I've never really felt like... He's ever in trouble. Even John Smith. Like, who's he gonna have fight, like, tr trouble fighting with? Alpha? We've seen John Smith versus Alpha in the trailer, but, like, that's not gonna go anywhere, you know? At the end of the day, there's no enemy like that, and I think that's intentional. And is that a bad thing? Not really sure. It'd be nice to feel a little bit more threatening moments, but, again, those threatening moments are contained in the side characters themselves. The side characters struggling against someone else, I think that is supposed to be the challenge we're supposed to feel punch man you have saitama going up against everyone what are, we're not worried he's one punch man he's gonna beat everyone mm -hmm. in one punch but there's mm -hmm. some little part of you that's like maybe this is the guy this is the dude that's gonna be the in one punch man have i ever felt that saitama felt like that at certain points in the manga maybe garo like that yeah i could kind of see that right kind of brings it closer and closer one that it makes him struggle eminence and shadow doesn't do that there is never one moment of doubt in your mind that he is going to completely clamp much. the cheeks of his adversary. And that is something so wild and so ballsy of the writers. There it is. The base blew. I will blow up this I entire wish city. I had thrown off one more Atomic just to show them how overpowered he was. Sid took it easy. I would have liked one more last Atomic too. Yeah, but that, you can't really blow up a place. And here's the thing with I'm Atomic or reoccurring themes like that. The first time Atomic is going to be special forever and always because that's the first one we saw. It's the first one we heard. It's going to be special in our hearts. You can't repeat this over and over. The more you repeat this, it becomes less cool. Like you want to hear it, but you actually don't. That's why the author makes I'm the All Range Atomic. That's why the author makes the Silent Atomic here or even against Crimson, just like fucking no Atomic. That's why the author does I'm the All, like the, the Recovery Atomic. But there's like, you got to do variations or you can't really just, it, the original becomes boring and i hope in the future there actually is one more time where we do the original atomic sound i'd be very down with that just like one last final atomic but do it like the first time that would be very special to me but i loved i'm like aurora faking out i'm atomic there that's probably one of my favorite moments too and escape since again he doesn't want to overdo it and his plan is to stay in the shadows i think sid was enjoying his fight with beatrix and amelia oh, for simply sure. like you would back when you were shot he keeps calling iris amelia is this an inside meme this is Beatrix and Iris Midgar. I think this is an inside reference I'm not getting. I'm playing with toys. And after a while, you get tired of playing with those toys and you put them back in your toy box. That's exactly what Sid did. So he fled from the scene to go back to his normal life as a teenager. But that's not all. If you thought the amazingly choreographed fighting scenes and the okay, bass drops dude. and the awesome oh, sound... Oh, no. whoa, whoa. You don't say amazingly choreographed fight scenes when you just see star sparks flying around like this. to go back to his normal life as a teenager but that's not all if you thought the amazingly choreographed okay 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 yeah yeah you're kind of right like that scene there that was just sparks going that kind of true i mean that's the bad frame to kind of show that. really dude that's amazingly yeah. choreographed yeah, true, okay true. it's badass but this isn't choreography fighting scenes and the bass drops and the awesome soundtrack was the best that this episode had to offer you would be absolutely wrong. We see Rose get approached by Alpha to join Shadow Garden. Now, yeah. this was actually inevitable, and I predicted this would happen due to the fact that Sid gave Rose power, and I assumed eventually they would come to approach her about the offer to join Sid's cause and the Shadow Garden. But yes. I did not expect for this sequence to be this beautiful. After Rose... What? Oh, uh, the burger wrapper was getting cut up? Oh, this is an emotional moment. Beautiful seems like... A bit extreme. Basically, she, she gets recruited to be part of his uh, harem of overpowered bitches. And yeah. And they, you know, they slice her clothes up. She's like, yeah. you now- the, the burger wrapper, though. Become the shadow. You are no longer the person you thought you were before. Destroy all material belongings. Steps Pretty much. Shadow Garden. We're brought to Alexandria, Shadow Garden's base. Which now, is like a country, mind you. It's like their their secret base is a country that's we just don't go there ever. Clouds. The scene isn't just beautiful due to the music that's playing in the background. It's beautiful and sad due to the fact that Talk about the burger rapper, please. Rose is stripped of everything that she once had and is yeah. now being trained to be a rank. But the funny shit is she has to leave beyond all her possessions, all her past, to become a new identity. But like 
While doing so, she's actually getting closer to Sid, you know, because Shadow is Sid. You're literally part of his harem now, but obviously she doesn't know that. In the Shadow Garden. And it's kind of like the that army. burger wrapper, man. When they train you from scratch. Dude, the shaking of her hands while the burger wrapper is cut. It's so emotional. It's, it's so bizarre. It's ridiculous. It's a fucking burger wrapper. How did this burger wrapper have such sentimental value? Yeah, all about your past. I mean, this, this isn't like the army. And they break you down in order to build you up. And the sequence is quite beautiful. It's so good. Sad. Outside of that, it's yeah. it's beautiful, sad, and kind of funny at the same time. Cause it's so bizarre that you have this girl breaking over, breaking down over burger wrapper being cut down. You know that bizarreness is what's so amazing about this show. It's so serious, but it's not serious at the same time. It, it is. It is a sad. It is a sad sequence. That is true. Uh, they slice all. They're not talking about the burger wrapper. Clothes off, and they're like, you have to now join the. These coomers are only focused in about Oriana becoming naked, bro. I swear to God, I'm the only one fucking fixated about that fucking burger wrapper, bro. You know, become one of the faceless members of the Shadow Garden. And it's your favorite Beethoven. And everyone's like, damn, boobs. And no one really thought about what was going on. And I gotta say, I'm Kinda not true, a huge though. fan of Beethoven or the piano, but this anime is absolutely making me fall in love. Moonlight with Sonata's song. great, and man. I'm probably it's a great already by now of you hearing this recording. Downloaded on my song and it's probably your ringtone. And they were able to capture the... I learned how to play the song in grade 8 high school because I saw it on YouTube. I heard it for the first time on YouTube, the Moonlight Sonata, and I was like, damn, this shit's so cool. And then my inner Chuni was like, I need to learn how to fucking play it straight up. That's how I was. So when this Chuni's, you know, character was playing, you know, the Moonlight Sonata, I was like, damn, that's exactly how I felt. That's one of the most relatable things in episode 1 for me. It's like, damn, he actually plays the Moonlight Sonata too? See, I think it's cool because he's just like playing piano. Yes, I'm the master pianist. I play the piano. That's what a pianist is. Yes, a pianist. Pianist plays the piano. Not a penis. A pianist. No, in the darkness, in the middle of nowhere. Mm, it fits really nicely. eminence that was shown the first time we see Sid play the piano. And it's actually something quite beautiful and was the perfect way to end the episode. Yes. Not just because... Thematically, this was the perfect way to end the episode. Yes, playing the Moonless Not as an outro of this like finale was actually so good. Because it was a beautiful piece. But because the song signifies everything Sid has sought out to be. In conclusion, this episode is absolutely top tier. And yes. was ended off not just in a beautiful cliffhanger, but in a way that you would end a beautiful film after sitting in a theater for hours on end. It was absolutely masterful. It was a really nice. And I think the animators should absolutely it. be praised for the way that they yeah. handled ending the show. I didn't really consider the ending of it to be especially awesome. Yeah, the piano scene. I think it was really cool how Sid just like finished playing the Moonlight Sonata and walked off into the into the shadow as a black feather dropped down into the piano and it's like done. Beautiful. Awesome, but you're right. It's a really nice ending. Really nice way to end the season. Now I do hope we get a season two, but oh, I'm not sure you got some it. Shows like this in more recent times can absolutely disappear without. Dude, we will because actually, I'd argue, I'd argue against that. I say shows like this doesn't disappear because recently with the anime trend, the studios trying to pump out as much fucking shitty garbage animes as possible. Like each fucking year, more and more anime comes out. And it's a really shitty thing by the anime studios to push out so much fucking project when they can't even properly maintain it, leading to delays and, you know, studios not paying their workers properly. You have all that different problems going on. But, like, in terms of new animes being confirmed, I swear to God, recently, everything is fucking getting a season two. Fucking reincarnate as a vending machine got a season two. But you know what's not getting a season two? What is it, guys? No game, no life. <laughs> Shit, more of a failed night because those are old ass animes. Those are boomer animes. Any animes you get now recently, pretty much guaranteed you're gonna get a season two. It's a trash isekai. I don't mean trash like I hate it. Like, I do in like it. In a good it. way. Good trash, trash in a good like, way. It's a trash isekai, bro. Of course it's getting out of the season. All the trash isekais yeah, get out of the trees. season. Yeah. I mean, we have good shows like Konosuba and Overlord that took years and but they still got you know, Konosuba season 3 is now in like development or it's coming now. Overlord is like on season 4. No, it's season 5 is about to come out in the future. And it's got like a movie too, right? But there was a lot of a time gap. Right? There was a big time gap. Even like Classroom of the Elite got like a long time gap before a new season was confirmed. In years to come back, even though those shows yeah. themselves were also in high demand. And it's just something about isekais that animators tend not to carry too long with. They constantly really? either switch studios, which makes it difficult for fans. Or even like ReZero 2 is getting so many new seasons, but they do get, I mean, High School DxD is not like an isekai, but they got to switch up studios. Data, Data Live as well, right? Data Live got all the seasons. They, they switch up studios. I don't think this problem is specific to isekai per se. To stay loyal to a show due to the constant art style changes, 
or due to the fact that studios take years and years on end to renew a series or mm. continue from where they left off. I think The Devil's a Part-Time is a perfect example of a series that suffers from too long of a delay and a change in studio that loses the original feel, the original authenticity of season one. It's just completely gone. Season two is completely different. The pacing was completely off. People just lose passion for his anime if you fuck it up like that. I can't wait for a season two. Eminence of Shadow is definitely a show that I recommend you watch. And I'm going mm. to be doing a full series breakdown on how good the show is and its strong points, weaknesses, and why I actually... And when that video comes out, Nux will react to it and make a video on that. And when his video comes out, I'll watch Nux's video reacting to that, of him reacting to him. <laughs> this is just a reaction orgy, bro. I feel like this is top five isekais made within recent time. The show doesn't- Sounds right. Top five isekais of recent time. Maybe Mushoku Tensei, Eminence in Shadow, ReZero, Overlord, Reincarnate as a Slime are like top candidates, right? I'm not saying these are my favorite isekai. I'm just saying these are like the top names that people- think when they think about top isekais. Maybe, maybe. I don't think it's as good as ReZero or Konosuba, but Konosuba it's up there. Too. Konosuba too, my bad. There. Break any molds, and it doesn't do anything crazy. I disagree. I think it breaks a lot of molds, and I think it does do things crazy. But the mold, I think, yeah, I, I think it's super unique in the sense that it's like going so cringe. Again, they're not talking about the cringe factor here, but this show is a show that is not just hype. It's supposed to be so cringy. It's supposed to be so over the top cringy that it becomes hype, you know? You embrace the cringe to become hype. And that deconstruction of a show like this, I think is very unique in its own way. And it's the only, the, it's one of the few shows that is actually doing this and doing it well. But it knows the story it's trying to tell. And for that reason alone, it carries itself pretty damn well. And it's unfortunate that this show carried under the radar for so long but hey i agree this show actually nobody fucking knew the season like when the season was airing there were so many other hype animes that it was really under the radar i don't think there was enough promos or advertisements as well i didn't know people were hyped about eminence and shadow until i started reacting to it and it was like pretty low-key until episode five then people were super hyping it up Did it? maybe that's how the developers wanted it maybe this is one of those top tier animes that just stays in the shadows damn he did it I am the one who lurks in the shadow to hunt the shadow. This guy really ended off like that. <laughs> nice, nice ending. All right, check out Kasher and Kuma. I wanted to watch a small- Check creator, it out. So check him out. But I think that the ending of the first season was good. And uh, I do think with, you could definitely have fun watching this show. It's like when of course. someone says something like, yeah, but it's dumb because the main character just wins every fight. That's the whole point. That is straight with the whole point. He's not supposed to struggle. And that is the beautiful part of the show. You could just so easily say, that's the whole point. I think it's dumb. That's what someone would think. The show is trying to pass itself off as an NPC of anime. It's trying to pass itself off as a simple show that just does all the things everyone else does. Under yeah. This, in the shadows, it tells an entirely different story. He's you trying to do nothing, too. You can always play that card. Literally. It's like, bro, it's just trash. It did its job to convince you into thinking it was trash. You've fallen for it. The evidence in shadow continues to survive <laughs> you can always do it you think that's gonna convince someone the point is to convince anyone the point is to annoy them thank you all so much for watching tonight. leave a like subscribe all right that's our first nux video we watched but it's funny that you know the whole video was him reacting to a different video but regardless go sub to his channel if you haven't like the video if you have and again emerson shadow i think is fucking fantastic again i think you should watch uh did he have the other guy linked here too he doesn't but you know where to go. By the way, we do these reactions live on stream on YouTube, 7 a.m. PST. Hope to see you there.